could have regular actors who we cherish and rejoice in, but it could all be taken away from us by Brussels! <laughs> yeah, if this show was called Brussels and Beyond, this next act would be called Paul 30 Centimetres. But fortunately, that hasn't happened yet. So please welcome, he's one of ours, Paul Furt! <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Um, I just want to mention a couple of things whilst I'm up here. Um, the first thing I'd like to mention is about uh, these people who've done a little bit of travelling around the world and then they think they're all superior. You know, and you, you, you get introduced to them at parties. You know, like someone will say, um, um, uh, Paul, uh, you must meet Claire here. Uh, Claire has spent the last three years travelling all around the Far East. And you have to sort of say, Oh, yes, 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 hello, nice to meet you, Claire. <laughs> yes, 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 you're, you're so much better than me. <laughs> you're so much more worldly wise after all that time in the Far East. Oh, really? Six months in India? Oh, oh, you must tell me more. More anecdotes, please, more, more, more. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, what do these people think they're achieving? I mean, you know, why don't they just stay in this country and get on with their lives? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's, it's about time, actually, I was at a party uh, and someone said, um, uh, uh, quiet them down, everyone, please. Uh, uh, pray silence. Uh, you must all meet Paul here. Uh, Paul has spent the last three years of his life living round Croydon. <laughs> And then, uh, then, uh, then, uh, then I could step forward, I could say, um, uh, hello, did I hear my hometown mentioned? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, uh, that is indeed, yes, I am here, yes, I am here, Croydon. And, yes, that's right, and uh, I've, I've so much to tell you, so many anecdotes, I, I really don't know where to start. I mean, I, I've been in and out of Woolworths. <laughs> you really do learn a lot in there about different cultures of the world, far more than in the Far East, actually. <laughs> I think that it was in Pound Saver that I truly found myself. <laughs> if you do have time, I must tell you about my gap here in Streatham. <laughs> well, actually, whilst I'm uh, on this subject, I'll tell you another lot of people who think they're all superior. It's those people who put those signs on the back of their car with baby on board. <laughs> As if to say, we're heterosexual. <laughs> and not only that, we are also fertile. <laughs> we have created one or more babies. We're, we're creating the future of the human race. <laughs> but, I mean, when you think about it, actually, all they're doing is just making more people who are going to grow old and die. I mean, when, <laughs> they're just creating more death. I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, if that's the future, I don't want to be part of it. <laughs> I'm actually going to hit back with a sign of my own on the back of my car. I'm going to put a sign there saying, first, may I point out that this is not a ship. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, it is inappropriate to talk about anyone being on board. <laughs> <laughs> Nor is it the Orient Express, a hovercraft or Zeppelin, which are the only other situations in life when you can confidently say you are on board. I mean, you know, I mean, car, you are just that. You're just in the car. <laughs> it's no more complicated than that. I mean, the clue is in the word in. <laughs> I mean, you don't say, oh, look at me, I'm on board my Nissan. <laughs> that will all have to go on the sign, so probably have to be quite small writing. I think, I think I'll have to put another sign up as well, actually, because I don't think that sign would deal with all my concerns. <laughs> I'm going to put a second sign on the, on the back of my car uh, saying, this car contains between one and five people. <laughs> Each of them is aged between naught and 110. <laughs> Undisclosed age. Uh, some of the people in the car may be heterosexual. <laughs> some may be homosexual. Some may be fertile. Some may be sterile. Some may be are undergoing IVF treatment. <laughs> But they are all equally deserving of not having a car driven into the back of them. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, on, on, a, on a slightly different subject, uh, something else I've been thinking about. Why is it? Why are we incapable of receiving a slice of homemade cake from someone <laughs> without mentioning that it's moist? <laughs> 
Oh, it's very, very moist, yes. <laughs> mm, yes, yes. You've not gone easy on the moisture in this cake, has <laughs> You must have been literally pouring the water into that mixing bowl. <laughs> I mean, I mean if, if you don't mention the cake is moist, then, I mean, you, you've basically insulted the cake, haven't you? And, the, and, the cake. <laughs> and you, you will, I mean, you, cre you create a horrendous atmosphere. It doesn't bear thinking about. I mean, I mean, I mean, if any of you sort of don't believe me on this, I mean, well, you can try this, actually. You know, next time someone gives you a slice of cake, sort of, you know, as a dare, <laughs> just try eating the cake in silence. <laughs> I can assure you it, it won't be long before your host cracks <laughs> and says, um, Is the cake all right? <laughs> or, or is it a bit dry? <laughs> now, when you hear those words, you've obviously, you've, you know, you've let the joke go a bit too far, so you have to sort of make amends by saying, Dry? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> That's the last word I'd use to describe this cake. <laughs> this cake is extremely moist. <laughs> it's oh, the moistness of it. Tremendous. I mean, it's like a rapture of moistness. <laughs> and you just take bites into it and the moisture. Oh, I mean, I, I think it's probably the dampest cake I've had all year. <laughs> I want to say something now. Uh, 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 this is probably the most annoying thing, I think. It's a, a customer under the train. <laughs> It's so annoying, isn't it, when you, you're just trying to get somewhere and they make that announcement, I would delay the customer under the train. I mean, I mean how can they know that it, it is a customer when they haven't yet checked whether he has a valid ticket? <laughs> and and, and, and th these people always seem to end up on the tracks in the rush hour, don't they? I mean, it's a pity that the, the tragic nature of their failed love lives can't dawn on them in off-peak periods. <laughs> You know, and indeed, if they are a bona fide customer, then their ticket would cost less. <laughs> but I want to say something now about firemen. Fire firemen, right, they're absolute show-offs, these people, aren't they? I mean, do they really need to slide down those poles at all? <laughs> I mean, why can't they just play cards on the ground floor? <laughs> when there's a call-out, reach their fire appliance by the method of walking. <laughs> and aren't school sports days humiliating enough for slow runners without them having to have the mothers and fathers races <laughs> to demonstrate that the children were never in with a chance genetically? <laughs> Plus, Sudoku puzzles. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how pointless. I mean, <laughs> Sudoku puzzles. I mean, it's absolutely... I mean, you, you see people s sitting there on the train or whatever, spending, you know, about half an hour working out how to get all the, the correct numbers into the grid. I mean, why didn't they just write any old numbers down? <laughs> I mean, no-one checks. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.